Do you mind telling what me up, what up, what up, what up, though? It's your boy, the Big Ugly Man Doll, and this is my show, Big Ugly Opinion. And we're going to talk about this Cat Williams interview conversation that's been having the internet ablaze. I decided I would do my video after, you know, a few responses rolled in. A couple of days go by because, you know, it ain't official until I talk about it. Now, let's get into it right now. I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, you have a great product here, and as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guests. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. <laughs> you brought that on over to here, and that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here's the setup. <laughs> you think the setup is, is, is started right there. And I have watched all of these low-brow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. What? What lies, Cat? Whatever do you mean? I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of Black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna send the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this man is right. Let's do it. Which all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You, I ain't been here 100 years. So I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. you. Can't say nothing. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. And Cat Williams was going to be was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. You mean in Hollywood they cast a 5'5 five five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds. That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Now, it's interesting about that, that he said that he couldn't play the pimp because of his Christian fan base. He cussed in the movie. He certainly cussed in that movie. I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Uh, no, he shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let an a, 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 a athlete that's been on steroids talk about one of the greats? Actually, one of the greats might have been on steroids. Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You <laughs> telling this man you stole. Why you wasn't there, Ricky? What happened? Stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He could have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was... Sir, no one... Why no... <laughs> he was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he... What? He said what with the H at the beginning? What? He turned into Little John. So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. Is because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. Mm. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike. Okay. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. Wow. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and all powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we talk about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy. 
Emperor, where I have all the credibility. And uh, all the pool. Uh, yeah, yeah he, he's spelling it out right now. I like what he's doing here. He's, he's giving you the backdrop to the story that he is saying is the real truth. And that Ricky Smiley is indeed a liar. Now, I get that sometimes people want to come back and tell a story, but like if telling your story makes it seem like you're going to discredit somebody, you got to know that it's going to come with some backlash. I mean, hey, if you're going to say you had that part first, you know, you know him. Ricky Smiley, you know Cat Williams, you know he's going to say something about that. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic. I'm going to go forward a little bit. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Yeah, that's when he was talking about uh, the first Sunday movie. He, he definitely was in a dress acting like a girl in that movie. You asked him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same he talking about Steve Harvey now. I hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over Cayman and look like Mr. Potato Head. Right? <laughs> you have to have a range. Yo. He had to say he can't talk good. <laughs> Steve Harvey can talk good, man. Psych. I played a lot of characters. 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know. I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore. The way you, you, I mean, we ain't even got. I'm not fueled by how long. I've had a sip less than you. <laughs> he looking at him like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. Uh -huh. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting on yeah, so why I'm not a movie star. What? We never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. Out. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or, or Tubi. Tubi. Wow. Can I say that again for the audience? Mm -hmm. They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. That makes you think, right? I've seen Cedric the Entertainer in movies, and he has been a funny character. But in his stand-up, it might have actually been a little bit lackluster when you think about it. So... Have we been fooled this whole time to think that Cedric the Entertainer is a comedian, but maybe he's just more of a comedic actor, right? Because, you know, in the Kings of Comedy, the funniest ones were Bernie Mac and DL. Now we like Cedric and Steve Harvey, but were they just over the top funny? I would have to say not really. Now that I'm, you know, thinking back on it, we all was really hyped for, for Bernie Mac's part. And and DL did decently too. But yeah, Cedric and Steve Harvey, uh, I don't know, man. You know, I, I've heard some funny Steve stand up, but Cedric, uh, they might have marketed us into believing that he was the super funny, you know, stand up comedian guy. They may have. I have to go back and, and check, but I, they may have gotten us. I don't know. This, this ain't some revisionist history. I'm trying to think, man. But I remember laughing more at Bernie back in the day, to be honest with you. You don't think Sam's a good, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir. I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Cat, that you had a lot to get out of your chest. No, no. You wanted to say the record straight. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. Then if you give the, a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened, it's untrue, and there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. 
What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They, for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that... He answered that question by saying, uh, they extra cool with each other. <laughs> Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions. It's because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. Wow. Why did Earthquake have to catch that shot? He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you're a Denver Bronco, why well, competition. don't you get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you? But I don't disagree. I don't no, disagree. No, all the no. Cowboys. Cat, damn, you like this. No, game. that's okay, not what right. comedian do you Did like? Did you play against the team? Yes. I've taken 46 comedians with me on the road. 46. Okay. Mm hmm. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat face on liar. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I don't know if he planned on saying that or what, but I've been laughing at that all day. A fat Faison liar. And so I was looking, I was like, I know Faison gonna respond to this. And we're gonna go right into it. Right here at the order of the dialogue. Check this out. Hilarious. When it comes to comedians, right, who would you say is the most overrated comedian of all time? Cat William. <laughs> Definitely overrated. But as a comedian, though, you feel like you're overrated? Oh, yeah. Oh, way overrated. Way. Okay, come on, fam. <laughs> Are you just saying that because he just said you was a fat face on liar? <laughs> He's overrated now. Come on, man. It's all mouth and no product. Where's the successful movie? Oh. Where's the successful TV show? He did the stand up, okay. Mm -hmm. He did 19 of those. You know? So, where's he great at? Greatness is consistent. Oh my goodness. All right, see, phase on. Oh man. The consistency is I've done 19 tours, man. <laughs> Like, you know, once you get slighted, you reach for anything to say that can be used against them. But un unfortunately for Faison, his career pales in comparison drastically when it comes to Cat Williams. So he really does come off as a pure hater in this moment. I get that you got fired on, but, you know, that's this ain't really the rebuttal that you wanted it to be. Give it to me, baby. That's it. Yeah, yeah, all right. So I want to get to the part where Cat Williams talks about Ludacris. Cause that was that was funny. It was it was so weird because it came out of left field, for real. I definitely didn't see that coming. No, um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing. Mm -hmm. and it had to be one or the other of us. Mm -hmm. Decisions had to be made. So it was both. Of they was invited to an Illuminati thing. Plus, we were equal. 
one of us had to cut off all their hair mm. and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. Mm. And the next person they said was going to get two hundred million dollars because they were going to pay him ten million a movie to do twenty movies. What? And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. So they were already contracted to do ten Fast and Furious movies before like the whole franchise really got moving that's this right here is i guess possible but it's a little difficult to believe because how do you sign a 10 movie contract before you know if any of them are even going to do well uh, like i said it's not impossible it just seems a little bit odd to me this is one of those things where i'm like uh i mean i want to believe you cat i really do but this sounds a little bit far-fetched, a little bit far-fetched. Not, not the Illuminati thing, because I believe that these people do sign contracts with people who have them in a bind in order to get their fame and fortune. I fully believe that. But, you know, it's just little nuances in here that seem a little skeptical, a little, a little iffy to me. But let's keep going. Now... One person ended up with a light skinned, ugly faced wife that wow. never done a, Remember, I told you that if I say that, it applied to seven people. Yeah. It's part of what they give you. Okay? I didn't get it. I'm not. <laughs> he said a light skinned, ugly faced wife. Wow. Mad about it? How much money they give? 200, sir. Sir. <laughs> Fast and Furious on so on what number right yeah. now? I, that's what I'm saying. Like, they are about to do 10, I guess. Or did they already do it? I stopped watching them around three. I was done with the franchise. Been done. Ain't watched any more of them since, like, part three. Once the Tur Tokyo drifting, I was like, I'm off that. I'm off that. I ain't, I ain't seen none of them after that. Look the same. Look the same. That's what they all end up saying at the end of the day. Kevin told you it won't go wear no dress until they offer it. And then he put it on. Whoa! Up. And I remember that because I remember him saying he wasn't going to put the dress on and then he put it on. And I was like, yo, I thought you said you wasn't going to do that, man. But, you know, recently I saw the video of him being humped by Shaq on the side of a police car. And I was like, oh, okay. Is, is that what's happened? Let's see. In a dress. Yeah, it was Saturday Night Live, wasn't it? I remember this. It was really, really weird to me. There it is, right there. Come on, man. You ain't have to do this. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Oh, God. What in the world are you doing, Cat? No, bring that back, because that was disgusting. Look at him. Why would you do this? I would have been like, no. Oh, you ain't gonna get a hundred million dollars. Um, that's all right with me. I don't, I don't want it that bad. Look at him. And why is he waving like he remedial? What is this? This is insane. Ugh. All right, yeah, because he put the dress on after he said he wasn't gonna do it, man. I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay. All right. Yeah, he didn't play. Yeah, yeah. Cat Williams was definitely going in on this interview. And here was Ludacris' response, and I found it. I was like, okay, let's hear the bars since you want to rap. Whatever's heavy on my heart is always on my mind. Like Snoop's cannabis shredder, I'm always on my grind. Hey. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. My bad. Let me go back to it. Whatever's heavy on my heart is always on my mind. Like Snoop's cannabis shredder, I'm always on my grind. They throw a shade cause niggas can never take my shine. I bring my watch collection on my jet, let me take my time. Like fine wine, I'm aging like Benjamin. Top five, I'm worth mentioning. Bring me rappers, I'm lynching them. See the pendulum swing, Jesus with diamond thorns. Ludacris, swallowed in Gucci linens when I was born. Never been Illuminati. Only a Illuminati, and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Now I'm married with kids, the evolution of life. Never been a cloud chaser, never say shit for likes. R.I.P. John Singleton. You never have to flex when you earn every one of your Fast and Furious checks. Okay. Afro with the sideburns. Yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise. Comedians check your temperature. 
<laughs> hey, Luda, that is not how you check the temperature. That's the pulse. <sighs> nah, man. Okay, that was not a good response to what he said. It was a decent verse, but completely irrelevant to what he said about you. You know, I, whatever, man. Everybody's dodging and deflecting. You know, the, the <clears throat> fact is he said a lot of things that made people very upset and none of their responses have really added up whatsoever. I guess that's the game you play. He, they, they let him wait too long and get charged up, man. And now he's he's bombs away in on y'all. And ain't nothing y'all can do about it, man. He pretty much smoked y'all, man. I don't know what to tell you, but hey, that's just my big ugly opinion. I'm the big ugly man, dog. Y'all go ahead and watch the whole video. It's on Club Shay Shay uh, YouTube. That thing going so that thing going super viral. I'm trying to figure out how I can get Barbara like that. But yeah, give me a like, comment, share, and a subscribe, man. And get at your boy when you get the time, man. I'm out.